Hey guys, Shea Bear 1000 here. Today we're going to be troubleshooting this old TV set. Stay tuned, I'll show you how to do that. <laughs> Excuse me. What we've got here today, a little project. This is, you see that? This is a Mitsubishi. I think uh, she said it was a 55 inch. Uh, let's see, I got this root down here. The, I think she said it's 55 inch. I haven't measured it, but uh, it's a 2006 from what I'm coming up with, so it's an older one. Um, it is the LCD. But it is also, it has a lamp in the back of it. Now, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. So she got a new TV and said, if I wanted this one, you know, take it off her hands, throw it away, fix it, whatever, I can have it. So we got, we went and got it today. This belongs to one of her patients. Uh, let me see, the model number is, let's see. All right, the model number is WD-52531. I had to type this in my phone, so, you know, uh, so I wouldn't forget to, to show you guys this. Now, what, what she's claiming is it'll come on for a second and then go off. Um, shut off. Now, whoa, sorry, guys. Uh... I had a Craig one time. It was, it was a 55 inch, but it was flat screen. It was new. It was like uh, 2012. And, hell, it was only a year or two old when this happened. It was doing that. What I found out inside of it was the capacitors in the uh, power board. Now, um, there's a lot that can be wrong with these things, but they're actually pretty simple. If they're capacitors, you can either get another motherboard or another power board or wherever the capacitor is at, but you might only have to have one capacitor and you, you can pay some money for a motherboard or, or I should say circuit board, uh, your circuit board. Or if you know how to solder, you can order the capacitors. They're printed right on it, right on the capacitor of what they are, and you can order them. It's just two little two little prongs that go in the hole you unsolder the old one stick the prongs through the hole solder the new one in clip your ends off they're real simple if you know how to do things like this now like I said this one she said she was using it um, one night and she shut it off and the next day she went to turn it on it would come on but she said there was sound but no picture and then it would shut off so that could be a capacitor but uh, I do know on this TV here now I haven't researched it yet but I do know you can run a code on this on this television set here Now I don't have the remote control but you don't have to have the remote control on this Mitsubishi um, to run the code you, you use the buttons up front here and I will show you how to do that once we plug it in to see what's going on. I have not plugged it in yet, so we're gonna find out this together. So let's do that. And see what happens here. Now what we're how we're gonna do this is I'll explain it to you real quick. There's two buttons on here. Uh, one is the is the menu button and one is the input button. You hold them together. You hold them in for at least five seconds and your LED light over here will start blinking. Like if it blinks, say, two times, pauses, then blinks three, that's a code 23. Now, um, it'll do that five times so you're not thinking it, you missed it and it was 32. It'll do it in sequence at least five times so you can get the right, the right code. Now, I, I did bring up the codes on my phone right here. 
I did bring up some codes for this thing so um, and also it tells you how to how to check that if you have one of these old things I'm just making a video you know I mean I don't know who would and I don't know what it would cost to fix it if it's a capacitor if it's you know something else um, so I, I don't know let's just see what happens it was free and so it was a video so let's let's see what's going on here let's go ahead and plug this in let me move my drink What you're going to want to do, when you plug this in, I heard a click. Now this one has a fan in it, and it just kicked on. Now we got a blinking light down here. Let me bring you a little closer. Zoom you in on that maybe. I don't know if the camera can see that. Yeah, see that light there? Now that's the light we're going to use to trouble, troubleshoot this, uh, the codes on this thing. Now what I'm going to do, okay, now, it did its thing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on and see what happens. So right here's the power button. See, the power came on. See what, if anything happens here. The fan kicked on, slowed down. Okay, I heard a little crackle in the speakers there. Okay, I just heard another click. Okay, now it went off. Now there is a reset button. Right here is a reset button. Get you down here. I'm turning the light on here, see if that will help. Um, there is a reset button. Whoops. Right. Right there. Right there is the reset button. Okay. Now, we're not going to hit that reset button. And I'll tell you why. Because the way this is acting, like if it came on... For a couple minutes, had picture and sound and that kind of thing, and then went off. I would try to reset it, but this nothing really happened up here. I could hear the inner workings. I could hear the fan. I could hear it clicking the relays and whatnot that's in there. I don't know if that's what they're they're called on a car or they're called relays, but on, on here, I'm not sure. I'm not a TV repairman guy, but I like to try to fix things myself. So I'm not going to try to hit the reset button. I, I figure I'm wasting my time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and run a code. Because you, you think about it, if, if it was a simple fix like a reset button, it's going to keep doing it more and more. So even if that fixed it, it's going to do it again. And you should run the codes anyway if it's possible of doing it. I do know this TV for a fact is uh, you, it, it will give you a code. Now let me get you zoomed in here on the light and on the buttons. Now over here, I'm going to try to get over here out of your way, but right here, whoops, okay, we're going to be holding this button here, that's the input button, and skip one, that's your guide, this is your menu. These are the two buttons we're going to be holding, don't push anything else yet. And we're going to watch this light, okay. We're going to watch this light right right here. Okay? It's a timer light. That's your green LED. So I'm, let me get on this side. Okay? And you got to hold it for five seconds. So watch for the light and it'll start blinking a code. Alright? Let's see. Menu and input. They're both pushed. One, two, three, four. Five. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, 
three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's flashing a code 66. All right, let's see what that code is on our handy dandy little troubleshooting guide here. All right. All right, here's the code. You scroll down to this. Let me back this out of here. Okay, quit. It'll do it, like I said, at least five times. So let's see what we got here. Let's see if I can do this for you. All right. All right, see, there's a code 12. Code 12, no error. Code 21, 22, 22, 23, 32, 33, 34. There's 35, 36, 37, 42, 45, and 55. There's 38, 39, there's a code 61 and a code 66. Now we got a code 66. Now it says lamp did not start. That's DLP TVs. That's what this is. Now it says bad lamp or ballast. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this TV around for you. And... I'm going to turn this TV around for you and I'm going to show you how to check that bulb if those codes are right. Now I have had codes just like on a car we call them phantom codes. Uh, I What was it? it? Wasn't a Craig? Might have been a Samsung TV. Don't, don't mark me on that because I'm not positive that I ran a code on and it kept coming up this weird code. It didn't exist. It didn't exist. Well, come find out the mother, the motherboard or circuit board, whatever. The main, there's little chips in there. One of the main chips was bad, and it was sending an error code. So what I found out later, when it throws a phantom code, it's just like a car. When it throws a phantom code like that, it's actually the computer modules inside of it, the electronics that tell you what's wrong with your lamps or whatever. It's actually telling you, look, I'm bad. You got to get rid of me. So it'll actually tell you if it's going bad or not. So let me um, get this turned around for you. I think I can do this. I set it up there by myself. Um, you know what? I'm going to keep you guys rolling in case funny stuff starts happening. Uh, this thing only weighs like, I don't know, like uh, 70 pounds or something. So I set it up there by myself, but Monkey helped me carry it in. So let's unplug it. Alright, let's see if I can spin this around without breaking something like my camera, break the TV words, or my back. Right. Here we go, guys. Like I said, I don't know anything about this. It has not been a port, but I do know one thing TVs take. A Phillips head screwdriver so I do have that handy because I knew I was going to need that and it did come up a code 66 on the uh, the code thing. now let's bring you over here let's set you down here now on the back here look on your back make like I said make sure it's unplugged now on the back if you have the DLP uh, TV set Somewhere around it, there's going to be a square, a square cover that's going to have a lamp inside of it, okay? And it'll tell you on it, all right? Now, this one says, lamp cartridge access panel. Always unplug this TV and be careful if you take one of these apart. Uh, there are capacitors and stuff in there that do store energy for a long time. It, it can give you a shock. The older TVs, remember the tube TVs, the actual uh, uh, TV tube itself on the back of it. Um, I used to do it for fun when I was younger, before we had YouTube and before cameras was all over the place. You know, I'd get them just to show people and I, I would take a screwdriver or something, arc it in there. And but uh, these aren't too bad, but still be careful in there. And besides, you don't want to ruin anything else if this is your problem. So let's get you brought in here a little bit closer. All right. Now down at the bottom of this one, yours may vary. But 
if you got a lamp in, in your TV, there, you know, it's all pretty much the same. Uh, just look for the access panel for your lamp, all right? Now here, and there's always an arrow down here. Let me see if I can get you that arrow, all right? There's always an arrow that, that will point to the screw, all right? I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little arrow right there. That is pointing to that screw, and there's one over here on the other side. And it, it, it's like that all the way around the TV. If you want to take the back off, there'll be arrows pointing to the screws that you take out. If there's no arrow on a screw, see all these screws up here and here, they've all, here, here's a good, good example here, I do believe. Um, let's see. Yeah, see that little arrow right there? It's pointing to the screw. If you're taking these things apart, see that little arrow? Now you can see it. If, it, if this screw would not have an arrow on it, it does not have to come out to disassemble it. That means once you get it apart, you know, there'll be arrows on other screws that you have to take apart depending on what you're working on. So keep that in mind. It's kind of handy. But like I said, I've, I've replaced bulbs before, so this is really nothing. I didn't have to Google this. A lot of times, I still have to... My first... Uh, my first line of defense is Google, and I know, and the reason why is I know that Google always has uh, the closest thing that you're looking for on your, uh, for YouTube. It'll usually be one of the first one or two things that'll have some YouTube videos, and that's the closest thing. Now, if you type it in on YouTube, it might come up, you know, it might take it a little longer, but, so YouTube has helped me out on a lot of things. Now, I took them two screws out. There's no more screws around here, so we're going to lift this out of here, and there's two tabs up on top that go one there, one there, when you go to the same way. Yeah. Now, here is your lamp. Now, there's mercury in this lamp, so don't, look, monkey's pulling in. See her? She went to the store. <laughs> okay, so all right, listen, guys. There's mercury, and there's a big sticker here. There is mercury in these, so be careful. Don't try to break it or anything. Now, on this one, like I say, yours may vary, but this one has two screws on it. I've seen that since I pulled the back off of it. I wasn't sure, but most of them do. There's one right there and one right there. Now, what you're going to want to do is loosen it. All right, there you go. Now, see that will not come out, so you can't lose it. It won't come out. Same way with the top one. Loosen it. Now there's a handle right here. This handle. Let me back you out a little bit. Pull. And it should come right out. And there is your lamp. Let's see what we've got here. Oh my. Okay. Can you guys see that in there? The bulb, the lamp is, is burnt out. See all that glass? So that is probably the issue with this television set. That is what's happened to that. The bulb has burnt, blown out. I mean, actually blown out. That is glass down in there. See it? And the bulb. So, it comes from way deep inside there. You can't fix these guys. You have to get new ones. And in order to, to replace this, I will show you how to take this apart. There's, there's, a, there's a clip right here. There's a, there's a clip right here, which is tape. Okay. That is for warranty. So I know that... Because if, if you had a problem with this when it was new, and you thought it was a bulb and replaced the bulb, that, that's one of the first things that will check, see if that tape's on there. If that tape ain't on there, they're going to know you try to fix it yourself. It'll avoid your warranty. Um, so, but there's also like a little veil. Right here, a veil, whatever you want to call it. Alright. Now what you got to do, is you bring it back a little bit. Push in on it. Okay, there. And bring it back a little bit. Okay. Now this, 
there's a little nut there you're going to have to take off. See, I can't see this very well. There we go. A little nut here you're going to have to take off. Alright. So. There. Sometimes if you just push down on that wire right there, it'll loosen that nut up enough for you. But make sure when you put these back on, and I don't have a ball for this, but when you put these back on, uh, don't don't make them super tight because you can break the new ball. So let's grab a pair of sliders here. Loose, first of all, let's loosen this wire up here, or this nut. All right. And then the nut will just come right off. I don't know if you can see that in there or not. Just like that. All right. Take that wire off so you don't break it. There you go. Yeah. Now this. We gotta get these uh these clips off of here. Just pry that off. I'm just gonna use this. Be careful not to get glass all over you. My light just shut off, it must be dead. So sorry about that. See there's one clip. Now, we can pull the tape off. There's no warranty left on this thing anyhow, so. All right. And then the same way, I'm just going to pop this clip out of here. Try not to let it go flinging across the room. Just like that, okay. So a screw here you can take out, but I really hate to do that because it also holds that plug in, right? That plug in. It holds the plug in, not the plug in. Okay, you got it. All right. All right. There we go. Okay. It will come out. All right. Now, there's this, and then you're, you're going to have your ground, that's a ground, take your ground off. Now, if you're afraid of getting them mixed up, put a piece of tape on one, mark it, whatever you got to do. In this case, I know which one it is. I'm going to pull this one out here. And I'm going to put it in over that little thing. Now that's the ground. I did that so I know that's metal. It's okay. It's all right. It's a ground. So I'll know that's a ground. And this one is the hot wire. Now you can also mark these. Put a little dab of paint. Like a white dab of marking or something on there. So you know that's the hot one. So there you go. Now, on these, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but there's some writing on here. And that'll, that'll give you your, um, your uh, numbers and everything. Is it 10-IR from what I'm seeing? Yeah. Yes, there's some letters there. It's A. HS, uh, looks like a hundred and thirty, HS 130A, which is an amp, R10-1R, that's the number I will order this, order this bulb through, that's, or this lamp, so, but, unfortunately I don't have one guys, this is just a, uh, like I said, this, this video is just a, uh, troubleshooting video, so, 
I uh, I wanted to share that with you and, and you know do it together and so so there we go guys now that's what um, so that's that's how you troubleshoot one of these older ones uh, there's a lot of difference in the new ones I know hardly anything about I know a little bit not much but I do know something about these so that's the problem with that one so stay tuned for part two I'll, when I order the uh, the bulb and get it in we'll unbox the bulb together and we'll put it back in together and see if this old beast will still work again so that being said thanks guys have a great weekend remember holidays coming up so be careful and be nice to one another all right guys so remember check out monkey 1000's channel and i'm out for now shea bear the myth the man a legend i'm gone shea bear for president all right guys let's do this see you guys later bye bye